Hello, I'm Dr. Morales and I have treated thousands of patients with atrial fibrillation. In this video, I want to discuss essential tips for people who have been diagnosed with AFib. If you or a loved one has been recently diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, you may be doing a lot of Google searching and trying to get as much information possible about this condition and maybe feeling a little overwhelmed about all the information that's out there. So how do you make sense of what's right or what's wrong? How do you find out the best treatment option for you? With my patients when they're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, I usually tell them that managing atrial fibrillation is like trying to manage two different separate conditions. First there are your symptoms and then there's also your risk of stroke and they need to be managed separately to achieve optimal results. There are very common symptoms related to atrial fibrillation which are usually a sensation of a heart racing or shortness of breath. Some people may feel chest pain. Managing symptoms of AFib is just one phase of managing atrial fibrillation. Most commonly when someone is first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, you'll be started on medical therapy, which is a very appropriate option for many patients, but there are also multiple options available. I usually emphasize to my patients this important tip when they're first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. Just because you're given a certain medication to control your symptoms doesn't mean that that's the end all option for you. There are also rhythm control strategies that include, can include procedures called a cardioversion or a catheter ablation procedure which can both significantly reduce AFib symptoms. In addition, lifestyle modifications can also significantly reduce symptoms of AFib for many people. Now, how about managing the risk of stroke associated with AFib? Risk of stroke is a completely separate issue that is separate from managing symptoms of AFib. Reducing a patient's risk of stroke is probably the most important thing at the beginning when it comes to managing atrial fibrillation. You need to make sure that your risk of stroke is assessed and that you get put on the right treatment option to prevent a stroke. The most commonly used system for assessing an individual patient's risk for stroke is called the chads vask risk scoring system. For most people, it will be recommended to take strong blood thinning medications because they usually work the best for reducing risk of stroke. Commonly recommended blood thinning medications include Eliquis or Xarelto. Now, for patients with an overall very low risk for stroke, it can be optional to not take these stronger blood thinning medications. In addition, there are a few procedure options to reduce risk of stroke in patients that are unable to tolerate standard recommended blood thinning medication. Lastly, I want to emphasize to people that when they are first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, seek a consultation with an electrophysiologist. An electrophysiologist is a subset of cardiology and we are experts in atrial fibrillation. An electrophysiologist is inherently going to give you more treatment options for managing your atrial fibrillation. Many primary care doctors and even some cardiologists are likely to give a patient conservative medical therapy for their atrial fibrillation, which for many patients, that's a very reasonable option. But there are also other options, and an electrophysiologist is most likely to give you more treatment options for your atrial fibrillation, whether that be a different medication, a different procedures such as a cardioversion or a catheter ablation procedure, which may help manage your atrial fibrillation symptoms better. I usually urge people when they're first diagnosed with AFib to seek a consultation with an electrophysiologist early in your disease process because in the earlier stages of AFib, such as when you're recently diagnosed, you actually have a higher spectrum for success, whether it's with medications or procedures. Once you've had AFib for a while, the success rate of different treatment strategies tends to go down. An earlier consultation with an electrophysiologist is the key to having better long-term success over atrial fibrillation and the debilitating symptoms of AFib. I hope that this video helps guide you in understanding atrial fibrillation treatment options and helps you realize that you are not alone. There are millions of people with atrial fibrillation going through the same symptoms that you are going through. Together, we can find the right treatment option that works best for you.